Years back, there was a teacher in another tradition who liked to talk a lot about the bureaucracy of the ego and how we have to throw off the shackles and tyranny of that bureaucracy. And by that he meant your ideas of right and wrong, of what you should and shouldn't do, and his way of over overcoming that tyranny of that bureaucracy was to do a lot of things you, your mind told you shouldn't do. And as you can imagine, he ended up doing himself a lot of harm and a lot of harm to other people, breaking the precepts, getting them to break the precepts. The thing is that that's not the bureaucracy you have to be afraid of, and that's not the tyranny you have to be afraid of. You have another bureaucracy, and it's the bureaucracy of your defilements. Your mind is very complex. It's like a large organization making all kinds of decisions all the time. And we have this tendency to delegate a lot of our decisions to our old habits. There are a lot of little bureaus in there that we haven't looked into for a long time. We gave them a job, and they protect their jobs. If you've ever studied any theory of bureaucracy, you know that each bureaucrat's main job is to protect his or her job. That's why they don't like reform, and they don't like to have their work looked into. And so they're all creating karma, and it's all going to affect you. And as the boss, because you've delegated things and tend to get distracted, you're not even there in the office all the time, you end up suffering from the decisions that these lower-level bureaucrats have made. So one, one of the main purposes of the meditation is to shine a light down into this bureaucracy, all these lower-level functionaries inside your mind, the ones that allow greed, aversion, and illusion to have sway over the choices you're making that you're barely aware that you're making. And as dealing with any kind of bureaucracy, there's what you call the deep politics, the really inner-level workings of the various defilements that scratch each other's back, help each other along. You've got to shine a light into there. We're doing a little bit of investigative reporting here as we get the mind to settle down. And the first thing you've got to do is just learn how to simplify your life in as many ways as possible. Because one of the excuses for having a large bureaucracy where there are lots of dark corridors and hidden offices is because there's just so much work to be done that you've got to delegate things. You need a big, complex bureaucracy. But when you simplify your life, you begin to realize that a lot of these bureaus are unnecessary. And you can see they're just churning out busy work, and they have less of an excuse to be there. And as you get more and more settled into the present moment, when, as the boss, you have fewer distractions. You're not running off to corporate meetings or corporate vacations. You're right there in the office. You got to walk around. This is what we do when we settle into the breath. Because as you get aware of the breath energy, you start out, of course, with the in and out breath, but then you begin to realize there are other subtle movements of energy in the different parts of the body. And you're beginning to open up areas of awareness and areas of the body that used to close off because you were interested in something else. But now you're here, and you can settle in, and you begin to see the movements of the mind a lot more clearly and a lot more quickly. A thought forms, and you can see it in the beginning stages. In the past, as you were up there in the office, the head office, You'd hear about things only after the functionaries below you had set things up. And of course, when they send things up, they like to put their little spin on it. But now you can wander through the corridors, check who's doing what, and get a sense of what's necessary and what's not, and actually see the decisions that are being made. Because you'll notice. And this is one of the reasons we practice concentration and try to stay with one object like the breath. Is that once you decide that everything else that's irrelevant to your object is going to be dropped, 
you have to get quicker and quicker at sensing what is happening so you can let go of it. And you begin to see there are certain stages. There's a little bit of stirring here or there in the mind. And it's right at the boundary between the mind and the breath. And there'll be something that comes along and stamps a meaning on it. So this is a thought about X. And you realize you can go with that or not if you're clear about what's happening, if you're watching the functionaries. And you can decide, do I want to go with that or not? Once you've made up your mind you don't want to go, it's a lot easier to say, nope, 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 down the line. And that clears out a lot. As I say, there's a level of the defilements that create suffering that all you have to do is be aware of them and they wither away. In other words, you shine the light of your investigative reporting on them and you can see clearly that what they're doing is unnecessary and it's causing a lot of suffering. There are other functionaries, though, that no matter how much you shine a light on them, they have their ways of staying, holding on to their, as in Thailand, as I say, hugging their chairs. And those are the ones where you have to dig around, figure out, okay, what is it that's keeping this particular defilement from going away? Why does it keep coming back again and again and again? What's the appeal? As the Buddha said, these are the things you have to look into in terms of how they come, when they come, notice when they're coming, notice when they're going, when they come, notice why they're coming. What's the appeal? Why does the mind go for these things? What felt need does it, does it satisfy? And do you really feel that need anymore? Because as I said, a lot of these things you assign a job to a certain functionary and then you forget about it entirely. These old habits, some of them go back to your childhood. Old ways of thinking, old ways of seeing the world, understanding how you can get pleasure out of something. Because that's what these functionaries are all working for. Their ideas of what happiness would be, of what pleasure would be. And you've got to look at it and say, okay, what's the price of this pressure? <clears throat> price of this pleasure. That's when you begin to see the drawbacks. That's the fourth aspect of these things that you want to look at. As you clean out the bureaucracy. And then the fifth, of course, is seeing the escape. How do you escape from your delight in the allure? Part of it, of course, is seeing the drawbacks, and part of it is realizing that you have the choice, and there's a better choice. You don't have to go with greed, aversion, and delusion anymore. You don't have to believe their PR. And you learn how to see through all of their political maneuverings. It's like the deep politics of the mind. It takes a lot of rooting out. That's not easy work. But once the mind is settled down and have a good, strong sense of being stable, being here, filling the whole body with your awareness. So these lower level functionaries are all exposed for what they're doing. Then you clean out the bureaucracy. You find that having a bureaucracy is not a bad thing, because a lot of decisions do have to be made. Simply sitting here with the body, a lot of things are being decided, various levels of your awareness. But as long as everything is transparent, and you've got wisdom in charge, you've got discernment in charge. You find that this bureaucracy, instead of continually churning out problems and churning out suffering, it actually becomes harmless, blameless. So that's what you have to watch out for in this bureaucracy. It's not a sense of right and wrong. You have to see where your sense of right and wrong is wrong, where it's been skewed by the defilements, and where you can straighten things out. But above all, as long as your life is very complex, it's going to be hard to, to deal with these things, hard to see these things. You want to simplify as much as possible and get your awareness to settle down instead of focusing outside all the time. Get it to fully inhabit your body. 
to all the little back corridors and basements in this bureaucracy you've got here. Become open to your conscious awareness. And that way all the, the karma you're creating in a semi-conscious way becomes a lot more conscious. And it's in the bringing of consciousness and the bringing of discernment of these things. That's what's going to make all the difference. <laughs>